cut. You don't hear what I'm saying? Because I'm still blessed. You can go through that house and that house do not determine whether or not I'm blessed. And if you knew what was in that house, you would slap somebody high five and say, I know they was blessed because they didn't have no job. But just because that stuff gone, it does not change who I am and it does not change the fact that I'm still blessed because I can replace all of that. God from God. Let, me, let me see, can I keep on reading here? Because I need you to get this. For we brought nothing in this world with us. And neither can we carry anything out. But having food and covering, we shall therewith be content. But they are minded to be rich, will fall into temptations and a snare, and many foolish and harmful lusts, such as drown men. Now you know that's heavy. Such as drown men in their destructions and perdition. Watch this here. For, for the love of money is the root to all kinds of evil. Now this is the part I almost spoke in tongues about. Which some reaching after have been led astray from the faith. Made them step out of the place of being saved. Do you see that? It made them err from the faith. Now y'all tell me money ain't powerful. That spirit that lurk with it. It'll make you backslide. Make you disobey God. Miss, I ain't studying about what he say. He didn't, you know, he didn't, I, I mean, I ain't never seen him. What he gonna do? I had a fool tell me one time, and I said, fool, man, he just gonna have to deal with me. And my God, he looked the half crazy. Pastor, would you pray? I said, no, he just did it with you. You worked that out. Oh yeah, you worked that out, boy. I ain't got time to be fooling around with that. You worked that out. You know more than God and everybody else. I like this. For some reaching have been led astray from the faith and have pierced themselves through many sorrows. What happens when we get pulled away from the faith? Start going through many sorrows. See, he'll make you jump up and shout in your presence. But I'm, if I think I'm right, the scriptures say tomorrow will present her own troubles. I read somebody's uh, thing in Facebook uh, 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 talking about you ain't promised tomorrow. Well, what happened if you die today and see? If you ain't promised tomorrow? What happened if you stole from God today and you die tomorrow? But I say I repented. Show me in the scripture where it says you can repent from stealing from God. Can't repent. Got to bring it back. Scripture say, return unto me and I'll return unto thee. He said the blessings of God ain't coming back on you till you return what belongs to me. And I know I had somebody I felt him in my spirit. I don't know, don't bother me though. Don't do that. That's bad to bother a Bible scholar. Let's go to Leviticus because somebody uh, said, where that's at? I'm going to show you where it's at. 27, let's start at verse number 30. Don't bother me now. I don't bother nobody. I just come off a trip. I came home to a blessed house, beautiful wife, and don't y'all bother me. I don't want no trouble. Everybody ready? Leviticus 27 and 30. And all the tithes of the land, whether the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. And if a man redeem aught of his tithe, he shall add unto it a fifth part thereof. 15% then. When you steal. And some of us have stole two, three years. Mm, mm, mm. 
Now, I ain't trying to be mean here, but, but I had a, one of my daughters, I love her, I ain't gonna tell y'all who she is, that ain't your business, but one of, one of my other friends from Clinton called me and said to me, he says, Apostle, well, uh, well, what if you, you know, you gave it to somebody else to help them with? I, uh, no, she gave it to another church. I says, okay, but do you, do you order at Burger King and pay for it at McDonald's? Mm -hmm. Do you eat at Ryan's and pay for that country buffet? You ain't getting out that door. The police gonna come get you. She says, wow. I ain't think about it like that. You bring your tithe where you eat it. How you gonna Get a whopper and eat this time to go over to Ronald McDonald's and pay for it. <laughs> huh? You want me to finish? Okay, the one God said finish reading it. Okay, well, let's go ahead and finish reading it then. Where we was? Okay, well, let's go back to it then. We'll be obedient. We ain't got no problem with that. Want to go to 30, what now? Okay. Okay. Okay, we, we want to go to 32 days. Amen. 32. And all the time that the herd of the flock whatsoever passes under the rod, uh, the tent shall be holy unto to, uh, Jehovah, or the Lord. He shall not search whether it be good or bad, neither shall he change it. Uh-oh. If he change it at all, then both it and that from which uh, it is changed shall be holy. It shall not be redeemed. These are the commandments which the Lord God commanded Moses for the sons of the children of Israel in Mount Sinai. Is that right? Amen. Now, people say, well, we, we under grace and all of that, but I'm going to tell you something here. Bible says he ain't going to take one dot or tittle away from this word. Jesus ain't paid a tithe for you. He paid the price for your sin. Let me say it again. I say he, he paid the price for your sin. <laughs> he, yeah, he paid the price for your sin. Your tithe keep you in covenant with God. When you pay your tithe, you're in covenant with God. The Bible say Abraham before the law. See, that's how ignorant we are. Before the law, Abraham came and paid his tithes to Melchizedek, the king of Salem. Soon as he paid his tithes, the Bible said that Melchizedek said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God. Blessed. He didn't say cursed. He said blessed. Men and women of God. Do what's right in the sight of God. Uh, and the Lord will do what's right in your sight. Sometimes the enemy bless us to mess us up. Because he know that we don't really have trust. and We don't really fear and reverence the Lord our God. I ain't missing a meal. I'm telling you God is blessing <coughs> like never before in my life. Uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday uh, of next week, I'll be in uh, Chicago and uh, uh, be in the women's conference. Uh, for you who would like to go all three nights, it's 110. And you can come home each night, it's at their church. For all of, for you who would like to go uh, one night, I think she said it's $50. They don't take offerings. So therefore, in order to cover the speaker and the take care of the things that need to be took care of. She done it like that. And uh, we already have a good number of people there and it's not a really big church. And I know for some of y'all, you're about to die because you ain't never get a $50 offering. That's all. Uh, some of my $50 to go anywhere. You, Jesus will come back. And he'll come back quick before that happened. And uh, uh, we, we uh, those who might want to come out or those who can come out with you, y'all carpool, hook up, get together, and uh, we will be going to Chicago tomorrow night 
uh, it's, it doesn't cost anything, it's free. It's the stirring conference and we will be going to make a deposit uh, probably uh, Sunday one of the preachers will be here preaching in this house. Uh, I don't know whether I'm going to make it back because I have a 430 preaching engagement at Emmanuel Christian Center in Chicago uh, on Sunday evening so I don't see myself coming back here and driving back over there again. I'm just not feeling that one. So uh, um, God is uh, uh, lightening up my uh, Chicago ministry like never before. Uh, look forward to all the things that's going on now. Got to be uh, for for me to be down there five times in less than thirty days. Yes. You know, uh, we're six. We just left Prophet Piccadilly, yes. and uh, God is really doing something, and He's really, really blessing uh, uh, my personal ministry. And I was telling Nestle that I gave on another level because I'm believing God to reap on another level. I'm, I'm serious. I said, Lord, I'm going to give on another level because I need to reap from you on another level. I just can't do it. Uh, I can't do it no more. Uh, the robbing Peter to pay Paul and all of that, that, that stressed me out. I can't uh, operate and function under those kinds of um, stresses. I, I need a certain level uh, to operate under uh, be over in Elkhart with the people of God on Sunday morning, amen we have an opportunity to be there and be a blessing to them make a deposit in, uh, in their lives and we just want you to know that we love you uh, hold on in this season uh, because uh, um, there's going to be a lot transpiring and there's going to be a lot that I won't be able to do anything about in the spirit realm uh, because my hands are going to be tied. Uh, so uh, there are some things, I'm so serious. There are some things that, that uh, is going to blow our mind this year. The one thing that I've been really asking God uh, to just be merciful in that one area, if he would do that for me, is to let me get out of here without a death. Uh, I don't want a death. So I've been kind of, I've been, you know, I said, well, if I've done anything, you know, that's pleasing to you, and I know I'm running this country like crazy, uh, for the Lord, I just, just you know hold the death off on my watch. Amen. You know, yeah, and I don't mean no harm, but the next pastor he'll have to deal with all of that and things of that nature. But I don't think uh, uh, in, in my watch in 17 years, if the Lord say the same, we'll only be lost one member. And uh, I, I don't think you know, any other pastor in South Bay can say that. Amen. Not just one, unless he just started yesterday. If he's been here over a substantial amount of years, the only one we have really lost that have been a, a real member of this church is Wally Settle.